Ken, you said that uh, there were two primary uh, uh, primary areas of focus, goaltending and third line center. So obviously to date, you've got one of those things done. Uh, can you comment first, I guess, on uh, what Kyle Turris brings to the Oilers, how that conversation went, and then follow up with uh, where we're at right now in your mind with goaltending? Uh, first on Turris, uh, Dave Tippett and I uh, talked to him about, um, you know, obviously he's uh, he was on the marketplace, what we've got to offer. Um and uh, you know what he was. What was important to him, and uh, you know he wanted to win. He wanted to go to a team that he thought he uh, could, could 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 contribute, and uh, also had a chance to win. And he sees feels that uh, we offered that. Um, you know, from us, obviously he's a veteran veteran player. I know that uh, it's been a, I think a bit of a struggle for him in Nashville. Obviously he got bought out, but uh, certainly he was a key player in. Uh, in, in Ottawa, when especially when they went to their run of uh, Game Seven of the third round against Pittsburgh, so he re- shoots right. Um, he, he, we we believe he can uh, give us some secondary scoring in the bottom six, and uh, um, shoots right gives us a, a right shot center iceman to go along our left shot center iceman. And obviously he's a he's a veteran guy and he's been in the league for a long time. Um, as far as the goaltending position. Um, Talked to a lot of people today. Uh, at this time, right now, we don't have um, don't have much going. Obviously, a lot of goalies have gone off the board. So we'll see what happens here over the next uh, period of time. Okay. Uh, next question to uh, Jim Matheson. Jim, as soon as your microphone is active, you can ask your question. Uh, Ken, can you uh, the situation with Oscar Kleffbaum, Is that leaving you so much up in the air as to you don't know exactly if he's when he's coming back. I mean, I saw a thing today that it's arthritis in his shoulder, and maybe you can confirm or deny that or whatever. But if you knew one way or the other that he was having surgery, would it make it easier for you to say, "Yeah, we're getting this defenseman"? Um, you know, I'm planning. You know, I, I I'm sort of planning that he's he's not going to be back or not going to be back for a while. Um, is it making it difficult to plan? Maybe maybe a, a touch, but uh, um, I've t- I talked to JP Barry a number of times through uh, through um, September leading up to the tr- to um, the free agency period. So um, I'm sort of planning that he won't be with us at, at start, and maybe not all year. Um, so that uh, hasn't had a lot of impact. No. Good, Jim. Uh, next question to uh, Mark Spector. Mark, as soon as your microphone's active, you can go ahead. Yeah, Ken, this is a, you know, tourists, to get a guy like tourists with that kind of, uh, I guess, offensive pedigree to be your third line center. Lots of times third line centers are, you know, a little more mucker grind or win a face off, kill a penalty guys. Um, he's been a you know third overall pick. He was counted on in Ottawa, certainly, and hoped for in Nashville for tons of offense. Is he... Um, I guess my question is, is this a, a higher skill, more offensive third line center than perhaps you envisioned when you went into this thing? Yeah, probably, you know, obviously it's different times. Um, you know, I think, you know, obviously in the last couple of days he got, uh, he got bought out. Um, and, um, you know, he, he had to make a decision here over the last uh, couple of days and where he wanted to head with his career. Um, we reached out to him, uh, to his agent, Kurt Overhart, and asked him if he would be um, interested in coming. You know, I wanted, you know, one of the things you talk about is what their expectations are in terms of um, compensation. You know, I told him that that uh, we would be interested if if it was under two, and um, Ultimately, uh, we got a deal done at 1.65. So I think you know it's things are it's, it's different times with the pandemic and and uh, you know the the, the economics and the, the flat cap being at 81.5 million dollars <clears throat> for the foreseeable future. So it's it's different times. So I don't think that we would have expected to to be able to get a player like Kyle in a in a normal year, but uh, this isn't a normal year. Now. You know, if any team out there would have added a Jesse Pugliarvi as a UFA, they would have been probably making a lot of noise about it. 
you get him to back in the fold. You get your three, your third line center. You sign a depth guy in Ennis. Uh, do you feel like the the goalie's out there to sort of cap this as a successful free agent season for you? Well, that's the that's you know I you know as we went into this, Mark, you know like much like last year, you know up front, um, we were trying to get a little bit third line center. Um, <clears throat> A little more offense from the bottom part of the roster. I thought last year, um, the bottom part of the roster did a great job in checking. The 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 there's people down there that did a were a big part of us being in the top uh, two or three teams in uh, in penalty killing. We're but we're trying to get a little more offense spread throughout the lineup. Um, you know, so with Puliarvi coming, getting him back, and adding Kyle Turris. Um, we liked what we saw of Tyler Ennis when uh, you know he, he played well on the line with Drysido, Drysido and Yamamoto. So we've got some options um, up front. I think we've got good competition. We signed some, you know, Alan Quine and uh, between him and and Russell and Benson and McLeod and um, you know Nygaard, we think that we're going to have some good depth. Uh, we're going to have good competition. Um, expecting that there's going to be, you know, a real uh, compacted schedule, you know, probably, you know, a game every two days or just, just a little bit over. So we wanted to have some depth. So I think that we've got real good depth up front now. Certainly I got a going forward here over the next, uh, whether it's today or tomorrow or the next day, but at some point in time, obviously I've got to add another goaltender and probably uh, another defenseman. We've got some young defensemen that are overseas playing, you know, Bouchard, Broberg, Samarukov. Um, you know, Samarukov's case, he's going to be in uh, CSK till the end of the season. Um, so, um, you know, we'll see. Caleb Jones played well uh, when he when he came up. I thought that when uh, Clefbaum got injured for those nine games, he had to play almost 20 minutes a night. He did a nice a nice job. So, you know, part of where we're going on the back end is going to be, be youth, but I would probably like to, uh, with, with the uncertainty of, uh, you know, I, I haven't mentioned Ligason. I know that Ligason is also wants to come in and um, battle for a spot here. So, uh, you know, we might looking at, might look at signing one more defenseman. Um, again, it's got to be at the right price and the right, at the right fit, but basically we're done up front. Um, Got, need to get a goalie going forward here in the next few days. Uh, and then again, uh, um, going to continue to kind of explore what we, what we might want to do on defense, but probably would like to sign one more defenseman. Uh, Reed Wilkins, Chad Radio. Go ahead, Chad, uh, Reed. Thanks, Andre. Hi, Ken. Uh, Ken, actually, you may have sort of just answered what I was going to ask about because it was about how the defense score looks. And, and I was thinking, Okay, with with Benning gone, does that mean we can make the assumption that Bouchard is now a top six or seven for the NHL to start next year? But perhaps not. Could he still be, um, you know, playing some games in the minors? Well, Reed, here's my thought on young players. I guess you know, I'm I'm not against a, a 19 year old playing in the NHL. I just believe you got to win the job. I don't want to hand the job out just because. You you got potential, you know. The, the National Hockey League is is about winning and losing, and the people that the players, whether whether no matter where they were drafted or what what age they are, if they make you better, they go on the ice, they play, and the people that got potential, if they're not ready to take somebody's job, then they got to go to a place, and it's usually the American Leaguers, or back to Europe, or back to you leave them in junior or whatever, and they got to continue that development process. So. Um, you know, in Bouchard's case, I'm 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 very happy that he's uh, he's playing on an everyday basis uh, over in Europe. I think that when uh, we come to training camp, that will have him in a in a in a real good spot, uh, ready to come in and uh, and grab a job. Obviously, he was a a, a top notch junior. He was picked in the tenth overall. Uh, you know, he had a good year last year offensively in terms of points. We we know that uh, we're confident that he can. Um, uh, provide offense um, at the NHL level at some point in time. You know, it's you know when you draft, it's it's a bit, it's an interesting game drafting defensemen because you know you draft them based upon their potential to provide offense in in most cases in, or or the offensive defensemen that are drafted, and then when they turn pro, you start to judge them on how well 
do they defend and how quickly they can learn to uh, to defend. So I, I thought that uh, Evan made a real good um, – he improved last year. Um, I thought that in the uh, Phase 3 um, – you know, training camp when he came, I thought the first week, and we and we talked to him about. It, I thought the first week was uh, he was a little loose, and then I thought that uh, the rest of training camp and every day in, in practice, uh, the coaches were, were were talking very very positive about um, his attention to detail and, and the things that we want to work on. So now he's gone over to Europe. So certainly in Bouchard's case, I'm not going to hand him a job, um, but we're going to get. I want to. I want to be position so that he can come in and take a job. Thank you, Reed. Uh, next question. I think it's, uh, let's try it. Ryan Rashog from uh, TSN. Ryan, as soon as your microphone's active, go ahead. Andre, thanks. Uh, Ken, just sticking with the defense, I mean, any team that loses their, their most used, you know, power play quarterback and Kind of, I mean, cleft bombs massive for you guys. That's a huge hole to fill. I know you talk about Jones being able to take up a little bit more time, and you know Russell has some experience. But when you say you want to add, are you hopeful you can add a defenseman that you would consider a top four defenseman? Like, is that sweet spot there between the money you have to spend and and enough guys available to potentially add someone of that caliber? Uh I, I think you're, if your question is about cap space, and you, you know, there's there's obviously a couple of defensemen out there that are, are commanding a lot of the attention. We won't be in those sweepstakes. We don't have that kind of cap space. Um, so I'm going to be looking for more, um, for lack of better words, I guess, under the radar um, um, defenseman. So you know, ideally, a, a veteran, a guy that's been around the league a little bit. We'll so we'll see. One of the things that Oscar did was power play the uh, or quarterback right. the power play. Um, just your thoughts on it, with him not available. Obviously, Bouchard is tailor made for that sort of thing, but he's not a lock. Are you looking for someone that can run a power play if need be? Yeah, possibly. Yes. Yeah. If, yeah. For sure. You know, obviously, Ryan, the cleft injury is a huge blow. I mean, it's it's if, if he's not back, it's a, it's it's a massive loss. I mean, you're talking about your number one defenseman that runs your power play, um, plays 22 minutes a night against the other team's um, best players in the prime of his career at the age of 26. You just don't go out and find people to replace those guys unless you unless you um, want to go out and spend a ton of cap space if you've got that cap space. Um, and then when you get into that competition, there's not only you, but there's other teams. Then that player that's a UFA has to decide to, 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 to choose you. One thing that this organization has done uh, um, really well at uh, before I got here and um, was drafting defensemen. Certainly, uh, Clef was one of those, Darnell Nurse, uh, you know, Bear, Bear uh, Bouchard, uh, Jones, Mar 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 Marino, who actually decided he w didn't want to play in Edmonton. I traded him to Pittsburgh. And then last year we, we drafted Broberg, so it's Sam Rukov. So we do have lots of young defensemen coming. Uh, that's, a, the, that's the strength of this organization. That over the long term, certainly in the short term, um, it's a big blow and, um, we're going to have to try to figure out the best that we can to, um, to fill the hole. Some of it's going to have to, I bring, I'm not expecting Caleb Jones to step in and take, um, that role and that job and that responsibility, but certainly he's a guy that wasn't on the team last year for half the year and came up and was sort of in and out of the lineup, but he did a good job. So we're our expectations and hope that Caleb Jones can be in the, in the lineup on an every night basis. We also lost obviously Matt Benning, um, who I didn't qualify and, and he, and he signed in Nashville. So we've lost, uh, you know, a veteran guy like Matt Benning and, and then, uh, the potential loss of, um, Clef are um, they're, they're, they're big losses. So uh, on the short term, on the short term, got to figure out how we can best, uh, um, you know, fill out our defense. On the longer term, I, I think it's an optimistic because we've got a lot of good young, uh, good young defensemen. Next question back to uh, Bob Stoffer, Chad. Uh, go ahead, Bob. As soon as your microphone's active.
having problems with uh there we, no we're good there, there we, we go, go. Okay. you got me Sorry now yep okay yep. so ken how much of it was a byproduct of uh the cap being stagnant at 81.5 and how much do you think it, it was just maybe the realization especially after what happened in 2016 uh, there, there there didn't seem to be a lot of overturning, shall we say, on mid-range players. You know what I mean? Like a couple of the yeah. big dogs haven't gone, but Drangelo and Taylor. Markstrom was the one guy. And, and, but, you know, there, I don't know if there was a contract longer than three years. Is this – are general managers getting smarter, or is it a byproduct of the cap or a combination of both? What do you think it is? I think it's directly related to the um, to the flat cap to the economics. You know, I think you know we went to the general man Bob. We went to the general managers' meetings in early August. I mean, excuse me, in early uh, March in uh, Boca Raton, Florida. And at that meeting, Gary uh, Bettman told us that uh, he was projecting the cap to be in the low end, eighty four, and on the upper end, eighty eight, based upon uh, discussions with the union on the um, you know the the built in increase, and then you know, you're kind of expecting it's going to go 85 and I think you're kind of expecting it's going to go 90 and or 80, 80, 88 to 90. And then, then there was talk of a, of a, of a, uh, you know, obviously there's going to be a, a new US TV deal and there's lots of speculation. And, you know, I think that, uh, you know, so you're kind of figuring that this cap over the next three, four, five years was going to be on a kind of a steady, uh, steady increase. And all, all of a sudden you everybody's world's turned upside down and um, there's a flat cap now at 81.5 and it could be, who knows how long it's going to be 81.5. So I think that um, the, the contract, the terms of the contracts um, really was uh, the economics. The flat cap has a, has a massive uh, influence on uh, how uh, teams are running their business. Thank you. Bob, uh, next question to uh, Jim Matheson. Jim, uh, as soon as your microphone's active, you can go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Ken, ob obviously you were in the running for Jacob Markstrom along with several other teams. Was that it just become the term too long, the dollar's too long? And the second question is now, do you have a dollar in your figure in your mind for who's ever left and said, you know, here's what we got to spend? But Markstrom was kind of the home run if not him, they'd hold me. Yeah, I mean, we were, you know, we, we had our eyes on Markstrom probably like a lot of other teams did. Um, you know, you'd have to ask him why he made the decisions, you know, his decision ultimately, he had a lot of options and uh, uh, obviously made a decision to go sign uh, in Calgary. Um, you know, I've got a board upstairs with all my, you know, all our people in there and uh, we, you know, we keep, we, we know how much money we've got. We keep moving the boxes around the numbers from one box to another box. So, uh, um, you know, a little more money in the goalie position meant a little less money in this position. Obviously I've got Ethan bear, who's a, a restricted free agent. I know that uh, I got to get him Ethan signed to a contract uh, before the season starts. So, uh, um, you know, so the money moves around. You know, one box affects another box. Uh, you know, the defense box that I'm talking about, the goalie box, the what we what I pay Ethan Bear. So, uh, um, little more here, little less there. It's got to always add up to the certain amount to uh, to remain under the um, to be ready to be. You know, uh, salary cap friendly when uh, when 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 we have to be. So, so although if you were going to be going after Markstrom, he was going to be a 50 games, 50, 55, because he's been a starter. But now yeah. the goalies that are left, you're looking more like a, a platoon again with Nico. It looks like that for sure, right, Jim? I, you know, I, you know, I thought again, um, I, and I've said this many times before. I, I thought over the 71 games um, season, um, we had good goaltending. We got good goaltending out of both our guys. We had a great tandem. I thought it was the strength of our team. You know, if you looked at them both uh, collectively, it was it was tremendous, and and uh, individually they had their down times. But one, uh, Smitty would pick up uh, Miko, and Miko would pick up Smitty, and I thought that it was uh, we had no issues. We had, we felt it was the strength of our team. We went into the um, the playoffs with Chicago. I didn't think we played very well. Throw it up and down the lineup. I I we just didn't. Uh, we we weren't the same team that we were from. Uh, from January to uh, 
to March. And, um, you know, so when you go into the off season, you're always looking at uh, ways to try to make your team different, try to wait to make your team better. Uh, I'd said at the time, um, you know, and Mike Smith, I wanted to go into the uh, free agent market and explore the free agent market, uh, which we, we, which we've done, obviously a number of goalies. I talked to a lot of goalies that for a variety of reasons, they made decisions to go wherever they've, uh, They've gone. We feel good having Miko. Miko was a what, 917, 918, excuse me, goals against average. Played basically 50% of the game. So certainly I think right now I'm probably looking at a, I think most teams look at 1A, 1B. I, I think if, if, if there's going to be a compacted schedule, that's game day off, 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 game day off. You, you every team's going to need two goaltenders. So um, um, confident. You know, we're going to get somebody in here that uh, um, will will fit nicely with Miko and, uh, um, you know, f- fill out our defense. Again, we're done up front. And then, uh, and then uh, got, got, I've got some work to do, but um, feel good about uh, the work that we've done up front. I, I do have some work to do on defense and goal. A couple more questions. Uh, next up, uh, Jack Michaels from Chad Radio. Uh, Jack, as soon as your microphone's active, you can go ahead. Let me try to unmute again. Go ahead, Jack. Ken, I, I'm just wondering, obviously the cap is a major factor, but I'm also wondering from your standpoint specifically where the Oilers are at, is it a free agency period where you look at, you know, a number of three irons down the middle off the tee instead of going for the big swing and trying to cut the corner. I mean, does part of it have to do with continuing to kind of build to a final product? Well, I, you know, Jack, you can't have, you can't have eight, nine home runs on your team or eight, nine, you know, I think you're talking golf and it's the long booming drive. Um, the booming drives are, the, are, are in effect are the big, you know, big cap numbers and, and every team, you know, um, you know, I sort of look at it like 20, 50%, 25%, 20, you know, if you go to the cap, you know, 80 million, you know, you probably four or five players are going to eat up 50% of your cap, you know, and then you got, four, five, six players eat up the next 25% of the cap. And then you fill out your team. The last 11 to 14 players are probably take 25% of the cap. So, you know, once you've got your limit, every team gets their limit because that's, that's just how it, how it, how it shakes down for everybody. And that's, if you go to the max caps, there's some teams that for a variety of reasons, whether it's budget or it's rebuilding or where they're at they they don't, they're not going to that point in time. Certainly we've been a team here that, that uh, with their ownership um, and the support of the fan base and then uh, go, we spend to the cap. So, you know, we've, 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 we've got, we've, we've got star players. We've got uh, difference makers. Um, and the importance of, of, of drafting and developing and having young people come on your team. So I, I think that ultimately you look at your cap space. I looked at my cap space and maybe in other years you could, you know, maybe you could move some contracts to free up some space. Now teams that are taking that cap space on, they want, they want, they want assets with it. And some teams have done that. We weren't, we, we weren't in that position that we had to do that. Uh, you know, we were able to add some people today and we don't have to spend some assets to move some cap space. So I just think that it's, you know, you, you just, you just look at your roster and you look at what you've got committed and then you, you, you know what you got to spend and you know, you want to carry 22 or 23 players and you got to go out and fill, uh, fill your needs the best that you can based upon what cap space you've got. And then the follow-up would be with respect to tourists. Uh, you bring in obviously a guy th- that's a significant upgrade five on five. I'm just curious on the penalty kill. Is it possible that he'll be asked to go back to the future a little bit and do a little bit of what he did in Ottawa? Or do you think some of those minutes with, with Shea and moving along might be shared by committee? Well, you know, I think PK, you probably need, always need what six, six forwards, you know, three sets of two. Um, 
you know, certainly uh, Nuge, you know, at the top of my head here, Nuge killed penalties. Obviously, he's going to continue to do that. Um, Archibald killed penalties. I think that um, Gaetan Haas is a player that uh, uh, when I talk to Tip, he wants to give him an opportunity to uh, to kill penalties. Um, you know, JJ killed some penalties. Obviously, Sheen was on the first uh, unit. I, I, I'm sure that... Uh, we talked, Tip and I, when we did talk to uh, to Kyle Tourist, we talked to him about uh, possibly killing some penalties. So I think, you know, again, I think you go to you go to training camp, you know, you you, you go to there's a competition and you you play your preseason games and the coach uh, uh, puts people into situations in, in preseason and you start to make decisions based upon who's uh, who's doing the job for you. I mean, that's what really happened last year. You, they started to put out Riley Sheen, and he did, a, he did a real good job, and he was on the first PK for us. So um, um, we'll go to training camp, and same uh, thing will happen.